Hi and welcome to this week's GMBN Tech Show. Coming up, we've got some new gear from Markov, like a preload ring, pretty cool stuff. Uh, also the Mondraker 2023 range. And some truly fantastic stuff from you guys. And we've got a Jones this week as well. Okay, so opening the show this week, as opposed to having a topic, I actually thought I want to talk about a place that I've just been, I'm sure you've been many times over the years. I've just spent a week, or well, near enough, a week out in Coy de Brennan, which is in North Wales. It's actually like one of the, well, the first mountain bike official trail center. It was, I mean, it, it was pretty pioneering, wasn't it, really? Back in, what was it, 1996? Yeah, I think I when mean, it officially opened, yeah. You know, mountain biking, mountain biking up to that point was, was pretty much all about adventure, I think. But yeah. then all of a sudden, you were able to ride trails, surface trails, in a truly out of the way place, yet you can get round without all the route finding and the bog trotting involved in it. So yeah. it, was, it was ahead of the game, really, wasn't it? And, and for the first one to be in Wales, is actually quite close to my heart. Of course, yeah. I mean, there, there had been trails, of course, prior to that, but the first official trail opened uh, essentially because there was a race and they built this track so I you could race on it. I didn't know that. Right, so, well, there we go. Everyone right. learned something. It's a I thought name. it was David Davis with the bright idea yeah. to, to. Oh, no, no. To... It was from the back of that trail. They were like, right, this. This is something we need to do. Uh, but what I want to talk about here was like the evolution of bikes that kind of came along with that. Because when that started, you've got to think that most people would have been on probably on hardtails, maybe rigid bikes. Well, rigid. I think I think I if rode, you had loads of money, maybe well, an early full size. I, I think I rode Cody Brennan when I, wherever it was. I was on a, a rigid stump jumper comp. Yeah. I think at the time I was cleaning cars. Is that the one that I've ridden? It was, that's right, wow. yeah. I think it was eight, eight, <laughs> This is it on screen. I think it was from it was eight hundred and ninety nine pounds from uh Tooley Street in London. Nice. Mm. So pretty good pretty but, good. But shot. rigid, rigid by steel, twenty six inch wheels. And, and and for trail centres, so some of you will know this and some of you won't, but a lot of the trail centres out there, the benefit is you can ride them in all weather. Uh, without trashing the countryside. So they're very beneficial to ride them. But some of them, I think it's fair to say, can feel a bit dulled down. Cody Brennan's not one of them. They can't. I think the big thing with trail centres these days is because, you know, like, so, and I'm not saying Cody Brennan is one of them, but because the surfacing of trail centres has, you know, the, the fine material has become washed out, particularly in a high rainfall area like yeah. Cody Brennan, they become a little bit rough. Yeah. And so I don't think that rigid or hardtail bikes are necessarily the, the best tool for the job. In Definitely the, not the from what the stuff I rode there. <laughs> So yeah. I was on a, a brand new 140 mil bike you're going to hear about on GMBN soon, 29 inch wheels, and I was thinking as riding it, like the bike's perfectly light, great for everything, but I was like, I wouldn't want anything less. Like that was a perfect tool for the job. It's funny you should say that because I was in Coyle Brennan again. God, this is a big Coyle Brennan story this week, isn't yeah. it? Uh, I was in Coyle Brennan in July, and I was actually on the new Track Fuel EXE, 29 inch wheels. Obviously, so is, is the EXE one of the light power ones? It's, it's one of the mid assist e bikes, okay. you know, sort of 19 kilos. Uh, you know, a small motor, and you can hardly actually differentiate from from uh, an analog mountain bike, but. I think that type of bike, you, you don't need the big power for the climbs because a lot of the climbs are on fire roads. And then you go into this into the sort of single track, which is beautiful single track. It's some of the best. And yeah. you know the 29 inch wheels, the little bit more weight, it just keeps your momentum going through that rough stuff. Mm. I think. I think. I think 140 29 is a great trail center bike. I think, and I've said this well, many I think, times. Well, actually, I think, I think an e-bike is a great choice. Of course you do. Bike. But in terms of travel, I, I think that 130 to 150 mark is probably the magic spot for most people to... Full of suspension? Yeah, I think so. Listen, I'm not against hardtails, I've got one, but I think for if you're going to pick a bike, you're not sure what to pick. I'm pretty sure a trail bike is going to fit most people. Some might want to go lighter, some might want to go... I, I, I guess it depends where you live, doesn't it? I mean, of not, course. not all people yeah. throughout the world uh, have got trail centres on their doorstep. Maybe some people live, you know, in Western Australia. There's some fantastic, smooth single track there. Uh, yeah. Some people might live in, what's that place in Colorado? Fruta, is it? Amazing, you see that? <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's people that have got way better trails than we'll ever ride, and some people, unfortunately, just don't have the best trails. But trail doorstep. bike riding is what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but it kind of leads me around to the, in a kind of roundabout way, back to the beginning where I want to talk about, was what, what bikes are people riding out there? And more interestingly, have you picked the bike that you want to ride rather than the trail, that, you know, the sort of bike to fit the trails that you ride on, if that makes sense? Yeah. You know, have you been attracted to, say, an enduro bike because you follow enduro racing? You just ride it because you love the bike. Or have you picked a bike that really suits your local riding? Um, let us know down there. I'd love to be really interested to know 
because you know the age-old argument you can ride an enduro bike and everyone's like oh yeah it climbs really well i'll mm -hmm. ride it anyway but they're not necessarily the best exactly yeah you know, maybe maybe a trail bike for someone who lives in switzerland is the equivalent of an enduro bike here perhaps I know, possibly yeah. i don't know yeah put it straight down there and uh, we'll pick it up in the comments next week's show okay so into news and the first thing in news is a small and Kind of cool little anodized pot from Muckoff. It's a preload ring that you see on the crank and bottom bracket interface on many bikes. Now, typically, you'll have these made from nylon or plastic, and if you're a little bit ham fisted, they're very easy to crack. So, this is a really cool little upgrade, uh, and it looks pretty trick as well. So, there's a few shots on screen. It weighs between 8.2 grams and 12.7 grams, if that affects things for you, and it's compatible for road, gravel, and mountain bikes in the various options on crank spindles. So you've got 30 mil spindle cranks from SRAM, Raceface, and Easton that you can use them with, and also with SRAM Dub, 28.99 mil spindles. Uh, pretty simple piece of kit, but it looks pretty cool, and available in the same 12 colors as their valve stems out there, so you can color code it to your bike if you don't like their classic pink anodized. Wow, Doddy, how do you memorize all that super fine detail? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but I can't even see the scope. That's fine, I need uh, to look at it once. Folks, uh, next up, some really cool new bikes from Spanish brand Mondrick. And uh, mm. there's a couple of new bikes in the range, Doddy. There's a new hardtail, 120 mil fork on there. I mean, the hardtails aren't my cup of tea, but let's go through some of the bikes before yeah. moving on to some of the maybe the trail and enduro style bikes a bit later yeah. on. Yeah, but... so interestingly, for so, so some brands like Santa Cruz, for example, kind of drip feed their new bikes, and it feels like every week there's a new bike. Whereas Mondrick are just like, there we go. There's a whole lot. <laughs> Have a look through this lot. So I've kind of gone through and just picked out the ones I think are the coolest at the moment. And I kind of like this approach because then you go, there's your catalog, right? Yeah. You, you love the brand. I mean, people do buy bikes because they like the brand and where yep. they come from and the image is, you know, portrays. But I, I like this approach to, to bikes, I think. But um, tell us, talk us through the chrono then, Doddy, 124. Yeah, um, so I would, in Mondraker's uh, terms, I would call this a down country hardtail. So it's a cross country hardtail that runs a 120 mil fork. Can I log this, please? I have never said the word down country before. So there you go. I'm paraphrasing you. <laughs> anyway, right, so it's essentially a cross country trail hardtail as opposed to uh, a burly trail hardtail that you see with like 64 degree head angles. So it's nice and light. It's got clearance for 2.4 tires. Like I said, 120 fork. Geometry on here, you've got head angle, which is 68 and a half degrees, so it's fairly telling of who the bike's for. Seat angle, 74 and a half, so a bit more classic in terms of cross country. 430 chain stays and reach between 425 and 475. So a fairly conservative bike that's gonna suit a lot of people that want a hardtail. However, if you want a flying machine, a trail flying machine or a cross country bike, here's the uh, down country spec cross country bike. The Podium Carbon DC. Yeah, so nah. they, they do this in, in the DC spec. They've literally printed down country on the top tube now. Yeah. And they do the XC race spec. But now you've got 115 uh, rear and 120 front. That's right. This, yeah. this, is, oh, this is bordering on trail bike, right? Yeah, I mean, but this ultimately is where cross country is going. So although people are calling it down country at the moment, cross country is very much in a, a period where it's moving from 100 mil to up to 120 mil. The, the tracks are changing and bikes like this sort of represent it. They're a little longer, a little bit more aggressive. I'd like to know the weight on this bike. Uh, well, I've, I've not quoted any of this because there's so many different models. So is that off that, camera? Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> Um, they like, like I said, they literally drop their entire press pack with everything, all the details. There's no point going through it. All the details are on their website, so there'll be a link to that down there. Uh, but geometry on this one: head angle 66.8, seat angle 75.1, chain stays 432, and then reach 430 to 490. So 490 reach on a cross country bike on XL. That's pretty roomy. So I was going to talk to you about reach. Actually, I mean the next bike in the range is the Raze 130 mil rear 150 front. It's my favourite. I yeah. built a carb on one of these. This so. Year. At what point? I mean, Mondraker, you know, they came out with the uh, with a famous downhill bike, you know, the Summum, Summum yep. back in 2000, Craig, it was 2009 they came out with it? Yeah, I think 30, it is, yeah. 30 pounds, it was, you know, it was ahead of, the, ahead of the game, but came out with a forward geometry. Now, I want to ask you about the geometry of these bikes, because yeah. at this point, at the race, the reach becomes a little longer. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be on the longer travel bikes, you've got longer reach on the, That's on the right, frames, yeah. right? Um, so we're now looking at 450 to 510 on the reach. Um, the Raze is, is what you, you see, this is your favorite bike, you say? Yeah, it's a 130 bike, you run a 150 fork on it. I've inch, always had slightly more on the front. 29 inch wheels, yeah. 65 head angle, 77 seat, uh, seat angle, which 
that's kind of e-bike territory there to get all get more, more pressure on the front tire when you're exactly climbing. That, yeah. Uh, Chain stay 435 to hammer you into those switchback corners easily. Yep. And yeah, I have to say, uh, it's got to be a flying machine that one. Well, right? I mean, the one I've got, I absolutely love the bike. Uh, I think people know that anyway, but it's really cool. They're offering it in alloy now. So you get different price points at last because the carbon one, it's an expensive bike for but, sure. But Doddy, I think for me, this is the pick. It's the Super Foxy uh, Enduro Race version of the 150 mil travel. Um, why do I like it? I don't know because maybe you know the bit harder terrain in Wales that I ride. 100, I get it. Like it's it's too big for most of the stuff I would ride, but I have ridden one of these bikes. It's like a train. Yeah. It, you know, if you've got the guts to power this through stuff. Yeah. Don't I mean, worry about I the bike. mean geometry. Not a million miles from the short travel bike. Yep. The, the reach is the same as well. So you know, four sizes again in this bike. So yeah, I guess it's you know fine tuning the kind of horse for course that you ride, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, th there is one particular interesting thing about this. So you see on a lot of Enduro bikes, you're getting head angles going almost as slack as 63 on some brands. So they've, they've settled on 65 degrees, and I can feel some people like, that's not Enduro. But you know what, with the length of the bikes and their overall geometry, it works really well. Yeah, like, you yeah. don't always need mega, mega slack. No, because you've got that stability of the front center Absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. I get yeah, it's all, it's all relative, but there's a great range. So check out the website. They've got so many different models, colors, and price points available. Yeah, uh, now talking of fine-tuning, Doddy, Yeti have, uh, have got an update on the SB150. No, I mean, Terrible S secret this was. <laughs> SB160. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 10 mil more travel, is it? It's same, same, but different. No. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, it's, you know, it, the, the frame was ridiculously successful underneath Richie Rude. Obviously, had 150 before, and now it's jumped up to 160. Do you know, that reminds me, is that actually probably one of the most successful Enduro bikes? It probably is, yeah. It probably is, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. 29-inch uh, wheels, carbon frame, uh, switch. Infinity system on there. Five sizes on this bike, yeah. uh, small to XXL. Um, different seat drop heights depending on your uh, on your size. It's all uh, size specific, which is quite cool now, I think. But uh, obviously, being an enduro sort of trail enduro style bike, that is reflected in the geometry. We've got a 64 head angle, 77.5 C2 angle. So again, but then, but then the chain stays change across sizing, which is I think. Great. I love. It's got to. It's got to happen. I don't. It's I mean, I've been on the tall side. I've always wanted all the brands to do this, and one of the earliest was Norco, I think, to yeah. do oh, they did, different they did, chain stainless. They did it probably a decade ago, and didn't it was like hallelujah. So yeah, Yeti are doing it. So 440 on the smaller side, 450 on the bigger side. Yeah, and uh, obviously to reach up to 510. Yeah. And and it's things like that that you you pay your money for. Yeah, you know, it's it's going to get your body in the right part of the bike, so you know you're centrally balanced on it. it you know, that's 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 what makes it worth the money, I think. Yeah, and apart from a great looking bike. Yeah, it's a beautiful looking bike. Um, just a couple other small things with it. Um, sorry, I said the chain stay wrong. It's a 435 to 443. No, no, did not, you just not get 450. that wrong? Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a couple more things about the bike that has changed. So the Switch Infinity system has been revised on it. So I, I asked Richie Rude about his particular bike and if he would ever run a coil. And the bike actually was quite a linear rear end on it. On the last one, they've revised it now, so it's coil compatible. Which makes me think, like, if you put someone like him on a coil shop 160 bike. I mean, poor bike and poor rocks. I think you can actually slam that thing into stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's also the bearings now for the upper link, are not in the frame, they're in the actual linkage itself. Uh, so it's rumored to be a lot stiffer out back and a bit more supportive. Uh, and a lot, a really low standover on this bike as well. Yeah, isn't it? mega, mega low. For kind of getting around. Yeah, uh, you said about the dropper post thing, so as well as the size specific geometry, um, 150 mil dropper on the small, 175 on the medium and large, and 200 on the XL and the double XL. So pretty fitting for all height rider. Epic Bleed Solutions, oh. they, make, they make bleeding stuff for brakes, and they now have a massive range of fluids to suit all the different options available on the market. They're great value for money. Look like anaesthetic tools. And as you can see, they're color coded. So you've got four different size fluid options available. You've got 50 mil, 100 mil, 500 mil, and one liters. Um, they do dot as well. This is the mineral range. Uh, it makes sense buying mineral in this amount because it never goes off. So the blue is for Magura, that's like their royal blood. The red one you can use in TRP, Tektra and Shimano. This one, the sort of yellowy fluid you can use in Haze and various can other you brands. you say lot, sort, of, sort of yellowy fluid? I could think of other I'd words. say don't drink it if you find it in the footwell of your car. <laughs> Colour, yeah. Um, and then you've got the green one, which is for SRAM mineral brakes, which actually cracks me up because, I don't know if anyone noticed this, that SRAM 
put a, a really, really good video, by the way, and it's worth watching. Um, they put a video out saying how dot brakes are the best and mineral brakes, mineral fluid brakes are basically for uh, beginners. And then cunningly, they uh, released a mineral fluid brake shortly after. True story, um, I've never bled a mountain bike brake in my life. Wow. Um, what is this? For? Is this for pro people or something? I've got massive World Cup teams. I mean, surely that's not for a... For a... You should routinely bleed your brakes once a year, Stephen. Really? You should. <laughs> But given given that your bikes don't last more than a few weeks, I'm not surprised because <laughs> you just the bike's done, so you just get the next one you get on it. Get a fresh so, bike. Some of us have to look after a bike. But if you don't want a fresh bike, work. guys, here is the new fresh <laughs> brake fluid. Um, pricing on them, by the way. So fifth in the Shimano one and the blue mineral one, uh, you're talking 50 mil is 49. Sorry, 50 mil, the smallest one is 4.99. 100 mil, 7.99. 500 mil, 14.99, and the liter is 19.99. Um, Honestly, you're best off just getting the biggest ones because you're going to get the best use out of it. And unlike Dot, it doesn't go off on the shelf. And then the same pricing for the others, but they don't do the 50 mil. They only do 100, 500, and one liter. And they've also got loads of really good literature on the website about bleed and brakes and tips. Uh, can't recommend Epic Bleed Solutions enough. Can Link I, down there. Can I qualify something? Yeah. Uh, even though I've not done it on a mountain bike, I have bled brakes on trials bikes, motocross bikes, cars, and farm con bikes. Just to just once just, you've bled just so something, you, know. you can bleed anything. Yeah. You can bleed a radiator. You can bleed a brake. Bleed it out, Daddy. Yeah. I forgot to mention this book. So I had this book through the post from Rafa. It's called Off Road Heroes. And I completely forgotten that this book was going to be published. So um, it's a belter. One of my mentors, Tim Manley, wrote a lot of stuff in here along with Guy Andrews. And I, I got this through the post, and it's a it's a great sort of ode to some really some people you need to know about. Well, I just I, I just saw a couple of faces there. I mean, the greatest downhill racer ever, and Caroline Chausson. Yep. We've got Missy Jove, we've got the late Jason McCroy we've in there. We've got them all in I there. Mean, it's, you know, but, it's but, but I have to say, a particularly special thing for me was when I saw the, the chapter on Steve Warland in there. Now, Steve Warland was a mentor of mine. Uh, he's no longer with us, unfortunately, and reading that chapter about him in there uh, put a bit of a lump in my throat, if I'm completely honest. Um, I, 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 actually, I actually won the Steve Warland Specialist Printwriter Award, which I think you won it as well oh, later, later on. Yeah, I think. And uh, you know, it, it, it totally, you know, I took in a bit of a breath when I read that. It's a, a special book, and I think if you want something for Christmas, some stories about mountain biking and where it came from, I think that is an awesome choice. And it's beautifully bound as well. It's darling. absolutely lovely. Yeah, it's yeah. really nicely put together, very classy that. And that's it. Just wanted to give a shout out to that. Okay, quiz time now. Uh, I've got three questions coming at you on screen. First one. When did Specialized first introduce the brain technology in collaboration with Fox? Remember that they have a RockShox version of the same style product at the moment. So when did they first do it with Fox? And next up, uh, obviously I'm the expert at blue fluid. What <laughs> color is Magura Royal Blood Fluid? Ooh, and the last question, Sam Hill is famous for riding flat pedals. Does anyone remember what Rob Warner used to call him when commentating on World Cup downhill What races? used to call Sam Hill? Yeah. Oh, to one of the many things. Wow, but in, in, in direct reference to flat pedals. There's a clue there. Okay, now, Steve, we're going to jump into some comments uh, from okay. the last couple of weeks. I've actually been out a lot, so I think you've done a show with Anna in that time, and I think I maybe have. Rich or Chris I or think Chris has it. done I think he yeah. did a kids' show, didn't he? Kids yeah, tech there's show. a lot of kids' tech. Yeah, so a lot of comments here from last week's show. How's the boy getting on? Yeah, Dustin, yeah, he's doing great. Yeah? Yeah, he had a good face plant, actually, <laughs> the other day. I felt a bit bad when Steph came home from work. He had, this, this was non-bike related, but he had his crash beanie on, and when he got up, his beanie had rolled down his face. When I unpeeled it, I was like, good job he had the beanie on. Sort of acted a little barrier there. Anyhow. This is um, all about kids. This is yeah. all about kids' tech, isn't it? Yeah, so Nine Paranil said, I recently bought my little boy a Canyon Offspring AL20. Awesome little bike, and with this matte black paint, it matches my Canyon Talk on, uh, and that's obviously extremely important. I completely agree. You've got to have like the mini me approach. Yeah. Uh, Steve M says, uh, best tech is those dropper posts for kids. Cartridge with lower weight required to drop it thanks to PNW components. Brilliant idea that is, yeah. Yeah, my son was still too short. I put uh, a small string between the frame and saddle rail. Yeah. I'll cut it next. To, to lower it, to keep okay, it from yeah. extending too high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. I yeah, it, that's a great it. idea. Um, Arc1980 says, kids EMTB. I've been able to go on long multi-day rides with my kids on their own e-bikes. Uh, they can join me when I'm with a group of mates as they can keep up and no complaints. Do you know what? I think the e-bikes e thing with kids is so misunderstood. I think a lot of people think, oh, they're lazy. But it's like, 
No, it means your kids can ride for longer. It's a, it's it's a, a brilliant thing. It's a tricky one. I, I don't know where I stand on it, to be honest. I, I think, uh, I don't think they should only have them, though. This is the problem, because they cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. In my eyes, you would have a regular bike so you can, can learn to ride and ride with our friends, but if your kid really likes mountain biking, yeah. you're going to want them to come out with you, and then it becomes difficult because of the distance it's, and endurance. Yeah. And mm. that that's when an EMTB for a kid would be the dream. Yeah. Can I move on to yeah. the next? Oh, I'm gonna missing I'm, that one. I'm going to leave that one. Uh, Heather Parry, uh, Obea have some amazing uh, kitted out 20 and 24 inch bikes. You must have seen those, Daddy. I have, yeah. The only thing that we struggle to locate are elbow and knee pads that are adjustable. Skateboarding pads, probably. Mm. I mean, it's, it's an industry that's been looking after kids' protection for years. Won't be quite as good as the bike specific stuff, uh, but I know that some brands out there do make kids specific pads. So I think Fox used to make some smaller ones, but. If you're really struggling on the size skateboard stuff, mm. I reckon it's going to be your best bet, and it'll be cheap as well, uh, which would be good. Um, and some comments on that Scott Genius. So the latest Scott Genius with the hidden shock, you know, like the bold design and the hidden everything. What's your thoughts on that? Beautiful. It's beautiful. What about maintenance? Pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking, because I haven't even seen that bike. Uh, but that is automatically what a lot of people are going to think. Now, I've, I've ridden the original bold that had the shock hidden away, and I just I thought it was incredible because let's face it, once you've adjusted the shock, you don't really do much to it. it it's funny, you know. We, I mean, I've got to obviously bring some e mountain bike stuff in here. You, this, you've got mountain bikes trying to hide some of the tech on the bikes, and yeah. you've got e bikes trying to hide the motor. So it's like everyone's trying to hide trying to something. Hide oh, and you can have that Scott bike that's got the hidden motor and the hidden shock and everything. True, true, yeah. Um, the patron. But, but Thunderstruck MTV said cables through the headset and the hidden shock are just like a black car. They look awesome on someone else's driveway. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that sums it up. I think we could just finish right there. Absolutely. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, great comments from everyone. Uh, thanks, as always, for getting involved. Um, leave us some more feedback down there. OK, so we're jumping into Rewire now. This is where we check out old school bikes, old school tech, old school stories about stuff. If you've got anything, please get involved. Uh, the link to our uploader is here, and there's another one down there to, in the comments you can click on. Um, this week, a bit of a confuser. So this is a company called Aviotech, or Aviotech, uh, sent in by Jake in Southampton, who says the bike is a Fiocco Aviotech mountain bike, which I've never heard of, if I'm completely honest. Um, but it look, the frame looks remarkably like the old Kestrel, Kestrel frame. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, and then the fork is like a Proflex No Lean fork on well, there. Well, No Lean, crikey. That's yeah. a name I've not heard for a yeah, while. Yeah, so you see that's in fact, you can see the No Lean shock yeah, there where yeah, it's been yeah. stripped apart. I mean, the, the, the bike looks awesome. It looks very European with that build and there's Spinergy style wheels. Yeah. But no, I've never heard of that brand. But it, I think in that era, it was definitely mountain biking. A lot of people refer to it as the golden years when there seemingly was like hundreds of brands because everyone was trying stuff constantly. Are we talking like early 90s? Late, yeah, late 90s, uh, yeah. mid 90s. Mid 90s, yeah. yeah. I mean, there was a massive. says 1996, it's from, yeah. Okay, right. I need to put my glasses on. Wow. But I mean, it's a pretty special looking bike, you know, regardless, just, just seeing the stuff on there. Uh, it's got Richie Logic pedals going on there, original flight saddle in yellow. Might be a Trans Alp saddle that as well. Hard to see. Uh, XCR brake levers, three T bars, Yeti grips that used to leave ite ite in, in your hands because they were so hard to rubber on them. But I mean, it's, it's a beautiful looking bike. For sure. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. And the next one, this is from Alex uh, Wareham Forest in Dorset, 2005 Specialized Epic. So the Specialized Epic has got that brain shock on from Fox. In fact, they got it by uh, Rock Shocks these days, but the early one was, was Fox and actually came out, I think, in 2002. Uh, so this one's pretty early by all accounts. Yeah. And he's totally stripped his back, fitted new bearings. You've probably never seen that, have you? <laughs> fitted new bearings on the bike in the links, so he's using Enduro Max. I, I'm, I'm amazed that you can still get the parts for, for well, bikes 20 years old. Bearings are bearings, though. Yeah, you, know, yeah, you, can, yeah. you can get them anywhere. But, it, but it's great. I, I love this one. Someone goes to the hassle. But look, to... there's a pack. He's got a specialised FSR replacement kit there. Yeah, parts kit. And yeah, you're right. That is really cool. It's you can great. still get that stuff. I like that. Totally rebuilt the bike. You know, brand new brakes and stuff on there. Obviously, it's an old frame, but all new new gear. The bottom line, Doddy, is that you know you you get you get a feeling when you ride your bike down the trail like that's that stump jumper of mine from 1988. Yeah, it's a steel frame. I know it's got you know I know it's got 26 inch wheels and and, and V brake and uh, I think it's got V brake. It's, it's got, got a U brake on the back. U brake yeah. on the back, but 
the feeling when you write, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's a feeling, isn't it? Yeah, and absolutely. Like, so you should I, never forget that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, riding bikes like this, it's great. That's why I love this part of the show because you know people send stuff in that they're still loving and they're still enjoying. Yeah, it's actually making me think. Oh, God, it's good to it's good to keep yourself honest with riding yeah. some old stuff. I think. Let's get you back with your your stumpy at some point and, and uh, run us through that. Two thousand and four Specialized Enduro. Another bike. Oh, let's, let's so, have a so conversation. Much, so much to talk about. Thank you for sending your great bikes in, and we'll see you on next week's show. Okay, now for some quiz answers before we wrap up the show. Um, how did you get on these? Do you reckon you know these? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, when did Specialized first introduce the brain technology in collaboration with Fox? I, I did kind of know that one. Yeah. I did know that one. So, Two thousand and two. Yeah. Um, but it's mad. We, you know. You hear 2002, but you think that's 20 years old. Yeah, it's funny because, like, you know, three, two years later, they came out with the, the Fox 36 on the Enduro, which, you know, Specialized developed that in collaboration. That was with a Fox. line in the sand, that bike, and I think it was misunderstood by so many people. It was, yeah. And then what colour is Magura Royal Blood Fluid? I mean, obviously, folks, it's blue, right? I mean, absolutely. You know, even a non We even had a little like look me. at some earlier on. And the last Sam one. Sam Hill. Sam Hill was famous for riding flat pedals. What, well, one of the things, what did Rob Warner refer to him as? Um, in this, the World Cup downhill days. You remember this? I do. Flat pedal thunder. From down under. Yeah, there we go. Um, how'd you get on? Let us know in the comments underneath there. Uh, and just must have a little shout out to the shop. We've got some great new gear. Uh, on screen now you can see the Nightfall stuff, uh, limited range. Um, still haven't got mine actually. A bit annoyed. I've the seen everyone else wearing them. The new hats are good. Are they? The new hats are really those. good. New hats are really There's always good. new stuff. I'm out of date here. Uh, don't be like me. Get involved with the shop. Uh, and thanks for watching as always and supporting the channel. And we'll see you on next week's show. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Pleasure, Johnny. Pleasure. See you later.